it has been a hot minute since I have been back on here. I've got videos galore to show you guys, but today's video is about the garden and what's happening in the garden as part of the how to grow a sustainable garden on a half acre homestead. And not that it's 100% sustainable, but showing you just how much food you actually can grow on a homestead. I have my trusty iPhone with me today. It didn't even break out the real camera because I'm just gonna take you around, show you what's been done, show you what I'm doing, throw some clips in over the last couple weeks, show you what my seed setup look like. Of course, they're now outside and give you a glimpse into this year's garden. potatoes look like they have tentacles. These are our potatoes from last year and they've been growing in the basement and so I am getting ready to plant them in this raised row that I've got in the front yard. So remember we're doing a series this year on how much food you can grow in such a small space and so today it is the middle towards the end of March and I am planting potatoes. I'm actually a couple of weeks late but they should still grow really well. I thought I'd take you along with me and then show you what the garden looks like right now and my seed setup in the basement. So in general, in a raised row like this, you're gonna space your potatoes out about 10 inches, but I think I can fit about three potatoes and I should really have a garden trowel, but I'm not so concerned because this big sack of hay beside me, um, straw beside me, is gonna go on top of these potatoes. Uh, so I don't really have to actually put them too far in the ground, just far enough to where we have enough room for the potatoes to grow. Once your potatoes are planted, you put straw over top and come harvest time, you should just be able to pull the straw back and they're ready to pull up. So you're gonna wanna pick through your uh, onions. I have the Superstar onions and the candy onions, the candy ones are the yellow ones, superstars are the white ones. So you're gonna have onions like these, these little onions, and then you're gonna have bigger onions like these. So obviously you wanna plant these bigger onions first until you run out of space or until you get to the smaller ones. Um, they'll both grow, but the bigger ones do a lot better. It's really easy to plant onions. Um, I just, I'm gonna try to do this two-handed. <laughs> I forgot my tripod. I just take my uh, shovel or you can have a dibbler. I kind of stick it down in the dirt. I pull it away and right here in this slot I just stick my onion in there Of course, it's better if you're two-handed and then you just Cover it back up This is generally the easiest way to do that. You can use a dibbler Hand shovel works just fine, but in my experience I plant them at least down to here right right about here that way they're that much under the ground. Um, you're gonna have some ground erosion from uh, water and rain and stuff like that. And then you're just gonna have the general tamping down of the ground as your soil settles. And so by that time, it'll be about right here. So you're going from up here all the way to down here. Uh, and this is the part that you'll see sticking out of the ground once they start growing. I was able to get about 58 onions in this one row, so not bad for a small garden space. Our seed setup was pretty spectacular this year compared to other years. I just bought two LED lights from our local store, and you keep them real close to where your seeds are growing, and your seeds will pop up in no time. We had such great success with these cheap lights that I would highly recommend them over the super expensive ones that you buy from the garden store. All right, so this year has been pretty fun. Um, let me turn you around and show you. So this is the first side of the garden. I'm trying to get the cars and stuff out. That's our driveway up there. Uh, this is the first side of the garden. We've gardened here for quite a few years. We let it rest last year, garden somewhere else. Back here again this year. This side, well, that's a fence 
we got to put the fence around. Uh, over here, there are a couple of raised rows um, that we are just going to put some stuff in. Some chicken feathers. A chicken got, you know, snatched today, but she made it. No worries. Over here, this is a fun project that we have not shown you yet. We're going to show you soon. These are some rabbit cages from Hostel Hair uh, to uh, set up the rest of our rabbit tree. Let me show you them real quick. So these bunnies need to be separated. <laughs> they are already too old to be in here together. There's two girls and two boys. So two does and one buck. This broken one is the buck. This one is a doe, this one's a doe. I think I'm actually gonna get rid of her. But uh, unfortunately, I think she might be pregnant. <laughs> so we'll have to see. These babies are part, not babies anymore, but I call them babies. They are part of our sustainable meat setup. Uh, we, if you remember, we had rabbit, rabbits years ago. I got out of them when I got pregnant with my second son. Uh, now we're getting back into them. And we found these incredibly amazing genetics for Rex rabbits. These are standard Rex, which means they're full size. They're not the mini Rex ones that you do show, uh, show rabbits with. Um, but these guys are pretty amazing. And so I'm happy with their size. They're, they're pretty big and they're not even a year old yet. They're nowhere close to being a year old yet. Yet. So we're pretty excited about that. That'll be another video for another day. If you remember, if you followed us for any amount of time, this is our backyard area. We have to reseed it almost every year because of the trees, the trees that overhang the yard. This year, we went all out with fescue grass, so hopefully it'll continue growing. What happens is the grass doesn't grow quick enough, the weeds grow faster, cuts out the grass. But this year I think we stayed on top of it. There's little tiny blades of grass popping up before the weeds do. So hopefully, hopefully it sticks this year. Hello little baby grass. What are you doing? Are you being grumpy? Look at that nose. Oh my goodness. You're being grumpy. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's go see the garden. These are my tomatoes. I planted mostly tomatoes from seed this year. Um, we've got Amish paste. We've got uh, Cherokee purple. I've also got some poppies growing, some toothache plant, more poppies, uh, some more tomatoes. So they're doing good. They have actually already been hardened off. Um, they stayed outside last night. All night they did fine. Um, so I think we're, we're good on that. We'll just have to bring them in if we have another cold spell that gets below freezing. A friend of ours gave me, I think it's six elderberry bushes. Yes, praise the Lord. So these are gonna go, I think in the backyard. Um, right now they're just, whoa, they're just little tiny. Uh, there's some bigger ones back there, um, but those will be in another video planting those. Got a little helper here. Um, we did actually, before I get to the garden, we also planted some fruiting bushes. Oh my gosh, all those chicken feathers make it look horrible here. Um, so we did, we, looks like litter all in the yard. Um, we actually got some fruiting bushes from Stark Brothers and so we planted two currants, two raspberry, no, yeah. Two currants, two raspberry, two gooseberry. I'm getting this wrong, I'm butchering it. Um, and then I know we did an Arona, Aronia berry. Forgetting something. I am going to link it in the description. I've got another video that'll come on that later. But I wanted to tell you if you are wanting to get fruiting bushes, look at this, look how amazing this is doing already. Uh, I, I had no idea this hosta was here. So there's a hosta growing beside my berry bush but um now is the time to get those those fruiting bushes and fruiting trees so we got these because they do well in the shade so gooseberries currants raspberries can handle partial shade uh, blackberries um, they do really really well in the shade and these as you can see this plant is growing exceptionally well and this um, this space this is about all the sun this space gets so you can have fruit on your homestead. You just have to get the right kind of fruit. 
and if you are in a shady area these are the right kinds of bushes to get now you could also do things like pawpaw trees which i really wanted to get but my goal is to not be here in the next two years and so i would really hate it to plant a pawpaw tree and then somebody come in and rip it out which a lot of people do for some reason i don't understand it would kill me because they are native to this area and so i decided against those we'll get those whenever we decide to move but these are going to be amazing so i can't wait to show you how these grow in the shade this year hi baby and um check it out uh, i'll show you a little bit more later in the video are you my helper today look at all these chicken feathers look at them look at them all thankfully she didn't die she saved herself huh Okay, so onto the garden. I planted some onions. I'm gonna show you a clip, or, or maybe I already did, not sure yet. Uh, planted these. They are doing well, we're how about a weekend? And they are established finally, and you can tell because this is actually new growth. Here's the old growth, and here's the new growth. So they have set, they have established themselves, which is what you wanna see. Now, I will come in here, don't pull those up. At, see this we've been getting, getting a lot of rain um, so once these are really well established I'll come in here and break up this top and I'll also put mulch over top of them this next row is potatoes we pulled in about 300 pounds of potatoes last year and these are what were slept over so they um, they lasted all winter long and technically we could still be eating on them but I wanted to plant them instead. They literally had tentacles really long. I'm showing you clips of that too. Um, they're doing well, they are established. There are some little potato leaves coming up already. And so these will probably be harvested sometime in June. My expectation is to get about 150 to 200 pounds out of this small batch. All right, so when you live in a small space or you don't have enough space for a big garden, planting in containers like this is really beneficial. I have some herbs from last year, herbs over winter well in containers. If you're in a really, really cold climate, you can always cover those herbs with saran wrap or frost cover. This is just an old galvanized tub and it was rusting out in the bottom. I filled it up with uh, fill dirt. It's essentially, it's raised bed soil that you can buy from Lowe's or Home Depot. What are you doing? <laughs> and in here is my first batch of garlic. And then down on the bottom half of the uh, onions is about 20 more cloves of garlic. So one clove of garlic gives you one head of garlic. So I've got, oh, probably, probably about 20 cloves of garlic in this raised galvanized tub, which is just, it's just sitting on rocks um, and it has drainage in the bottom. There's another galvanized tub right here that I'm gonna fill again. There's my husband's really, really dumb project car, which we won't talk about, because it's okay, it's right, okay. Um, and so this is really good. So I can get my garlic. A lot of people will ask me about springtime garlic. Um, I always forget to plant my garlic in the fall, always. And so this is a uh, spring garlic. It's, um, I think it's called early Italian. I got it from Stark Brothers as well. And it'll come up in the spring and summertime and you harvest it in the late fall. Here are my little potato plants coming up. You see them? There's some. And they don't look like much now. I don't see any more yet. Oh, here's some. But they will grow big and tall. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this year's garden. So you guys know from my previous videos that we have a half acre, a friend coming with me, and we are living in a subdivision. You'll see the houses around us, not ideal. We bought this house in 2008. In 2009, I had my first son, Lordy B. And, and as you also know, if you followed us for any amount of time, I had my second son, little, little one here. Uh, in 2019 <laughs> they hey they and so they're about 10 years apart which is pretty incredible uh, it's like raising well it is it's raised ah, ah, come here it's raising two totally different generations and we probably enjoy the second one more than the first time parenting not the children the parenting um, because we're just we're just easier going people now but um, so now we have to concentrate on 
dealing with what we have, right? So this, you know, when we first moved here, I grew up farming. Um, I, I did not have any intentions of farming or homesteading or anything like that when we first bought this property. But um, you're a photo bomber. You are, aren't you? You're a video bomber. But um, now we are. And hi. so, hi. <laughs> And so now we, we make do with what we have, right? And so uh, as, as Jessica from Roots and Refuge says, and as a, a lot of other people have said throughout my life, use this time as the greatest classroom of your life. And that's truly what, what it's been. Um, this small acreage has really taught us, or me, uh, how to garden, how to raise animals, how to really be as sustainable as possible in such a small space. So experiment where you are and you will thank yourself when you have a much larger property but the goal in the next two years or less maybe even more who knows with the economy um is to be on a much larger property but this year we want to be as sustainable as possible so i am my goal is to show you just how much food i can get out of this small acreage this year so you saw the garden with the potatoes and the onions there are other two raised beds it's just raised with dirt and um, there's no actual structure around it that um those two those two raised areas will house carrots and then all of um not all of but a large portion of collards and kohlrabi and cabbage things like that i also have three garden um vertical garden systems through green stock i will link those below those are exceptionally um necessary when you live on a small property because you can grow vertically instead of growing out you can grow up i grow all of my lettuces in there all of my greens that i need to be have are in there um all of those types of things are more easily grown in a, a tower garden setup okay so make sure you get you get a discount too in the link below and i'll show you what those look like um we've had great success with those so Keeping that in mind, this garden though, where the potatoes and the onions are, will house all of my tomatoes, at least 16 plants. That is a far cry from the 100 plus plants that I grew last year of tomatoes. Um, we were on another property. A lot of people had asked me about that recently. Um, we were supposed to purchase uh, five acres up the road from us from a family member. We decided it just wasn't the best fit for us um, after being there and kind of seeing what the economy was doing and it would really have just been a stepping stone anyhow to where we really wanted to be and so we just decided against it no sense in spending time over there if that's not really what we wanted so we're back here which is fine with me perfectly fine with me because i love this little garden space so um i you can go back and you can watch the video on my garden setup what i'm planting this year i've probably changed it a little bit but i wanted to show you what was going in right now and our tomatoes and peppers they won't go in until may so generally the rule of thumb is you don't really plant until mother's day or the weekend after mother's day and the reason for that is because an example is last year the weekend after Mother's Day, we had a huge hard frost and it almost killed all of my potatoes. In fact, I thought it did, but plants are very resilient with just one hard frost and the potatoes bounced back, had the best potatoes we've ever had in years and it worked out fine. But the reason for, there really is merit in the waiting process. So when you feel like you wanna just run out there and plant everything, don't do it. My friend Paul over at my favorite garden center here, he reminded me of that. In fact, I think his exact words when I asked him, hey, Paul, can I plant these marigolds right now? Because I wanted to plant my marigolds before I plant my tomatoes. He was like, we probably should wait until the end of April. He's like, but I also told you that you shouldn't have planted 100 plus tomato plants last year. And you still did that. So, <laughs> so don't be Amy. Do what Amy says. Don't do what Amy does in most cases. Um, well, in some cases. So anyhow, that is all that's happening in the garden right now. So the fruit bushes went in because they're naturally waking up right now. Um, we are really excited about those. Stark Brothers has an amazing process. Uh, they come in these great boxes with um, paper at the bottom. So it keeps the, the roots nice and moist. And then from there, you it'll tell you that it comes with this booklet. Uh, you can scan a QR code. It takes you to the website, tells you everything you'd ever need to know about those plants and how to plant them and how to store them before you plant them. And so I highly recommend you go check them out. If you don't know what to grow in your area, 
email them, call them. They would love to talk to you about what kind of setup that you have and what works best for your area. They are a wonderful family friendly company and they love home setters. They love uh, home setters of America organization. They love home setters. And so I really encourage you to check them out. So goodness. So these were the plants that we decided to, um, to plant in our area. This is why I don't do videos. <laughs> Your face is dirty and you look like a little homeless baby. Go. Um, so I would encourage you to add, kind of like broaden your horizons. See what you can add. Even if you live in shade, you can grow fruit and it's amazing. And I can't wait to show you. All right, so that's gonna be it from me this week. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I have no idea how this video turned out because I had lots of clips and lots of things to tell you and lots of distractions hey. like this thing right here thing two thing two is bothering me all right guys until next time next time hopefully i'm going to be showing you planting tomatoes and peppers i am buying peppers this year so i'll take you through that process of what i'm buying and what i'm putting in the ground and until next time we will see you then baby bumped his head i hope you have a great day and happy homesteading